If you play Baccarat, you have to check out this tool I created. Even if you don't know how to play Baccarat, you just might want to learn it because of this tool. This is a tool that'll tell you the optimal bet to make in Baccarat every time. Let's check this tool out together today on Jack Ace. What up donkeys, Jack Hayes, the discount gambling mathematician here, where I talk about my three favorite topics, gambling, crypto, and STEM. Well, today I'd like to show you something I've been working on called GTO Baccarat. GTO stands for Game Theory Optimal, and that means you will be presented with the best possible wager given the composition of undealt cards. If you're not familiar with Baccarat, don't worry. It's really the simplest casino game, so there's very little to learn. In Baccarat, there's only one decision to make. What bet do you want to make? Banker, player, or tie. That's literally it, and it's really deceptively simple. The game kind of starts out like blackjack. There are two hands dealt out, and each hand has the opportunity to draw or stand. The goal is to get the highest total with two or three cards, with the highest total being nine. Cards are face value, with tens and face cards being worth zero, and aces being worth one. When totaling the cards, only the last digit is used. So a 15 becomes a 5. But unlike blackjack, there are firm rules for when the banker and the player stands and draws. There's literally no input from the better as there is in blackjack. The banker bet has a natural edge over the player bet, and the casinos make up for the advantage by charging a 5% commission on winning banker bets. The banker and player bets have small house advantages of 1.06% and 1.24%, which is tiny compared to casino games like Double Zero Roulette where the house advantage is 5.26%. The tie bet, on the other hand, only pays 8 to 1 and has an insane edge of 14.4%. But these house edges can change depending on which cards are remaining to be dealt. For example, if there are only 10s and face cards remaining, it's a certainty that the game will end up in a tie. This is because both the banker and the player will start out with a zero total, and according to the hitting and standing rules for the game, each hand will draw a third card and end up with a 0-0 zero, zero tie. And that would mean that the tie bet would have an advantage of 800%. And there have been many attempts to develop a viable card counting system like the ones that exist with blackjack, but traditional card counting systems are only a loose approximation for estimating the house advantage for each bet. So I've created something that's even better. I've created a web app that can calculate the exact house edge for each of the three bets in real time. To check it out, just go to gto baccaratjackacecom This site uses an algorithm developed by Mike Shackelford, AKA the Wizard of Odds, and is reused with his permission. I've just ported the C++ code to JavaScript and added a simple UI around it. And to be clear, this is not meant to be an approximation. This is not a simulator. This is an algorithm that calculates your exact expected value given the unknown cards. The display starts out with an undealt eight deck shoe and the stats related to that deck composition. And you can see the best possible bet for that situation, which always starts out with the banker bet. So you'd start out with a small bet on the banker and play out that hand. And the reason why you make a small bet is because even though it's the best bet, it doesn't mean that you have an advantage. So you just play the hand and press the number on your keyboard that corresponds with each card as it's dealt. If you see a deuce, you'd press the number two. If you see a three, you'd press the number three. Press zero for tens and face cards and press one for aces. The stats on the screen will update in real time and your best bet will be displayed. So let's see it in action. So this is the GTO Baccarat interface. You can choose how many decks you're playing with. The default is eight. Uh, you can go to one deck and as you can see, this shows a deck that has 16 tens, which is 10 jack, queens, and kings, four aces, and four of every other rank. But we're gonna go with eight decks, which is the norm for most Baccarat games. In an eight deck shoe, you have 128 tens, 32 of every other rank. Right now, with a newly shuffled deck, there's a house advantage of 1.06%. That's what we can see here for the banker bet. There's a 1.24% house advantage for the player bet. And the tie is the horrendous 14.4% house advantage on that eight to one bet. Uh, we're just gonna put the minimum here of 10,000. We're starting with 1.265 million and 300 on this iPad Baccarat game. I just did a brand new shuffle. I did the shuffle and the cut and we're starting on a brand new deck. So these numbers in GTO Baccarat should be accurate. 
you have a graph here of the deck composition. If you hover over the tens column, you can see we have 128 cards there, 32 of every other card. And these are the stats for the banker wins, for the player wins and the ties. The count is the number of combinations that you can make given these undealt cards. So there's two with 15 digits after it for the banker wins, 2.2 with 15 digits after the two for the player wins and 475 trillion different combinations for ties, which is 9.51%. We've already bet banker. Banker is the best bet here at 1.06%. I'm gonna click deal and we get a two, seven, four, eight. So I'm gonna click on the two, seven, four, and eight. Those values show up here under the last cards and these are the most recent on top and then the three cards following that after that. In the Baccarat game, the player won with a natural nine total. He has a two plus a seven. When the player or banker starts with a total of eight or nine, the hand is over and whoever has the highest total wins, in this case, the player. So we lost the 10,000. I'm gonna hit rebet. Um, since I've depleted these cards in GTO Baccarat, the percentages have changed slightly. It used to be 1.06% for the banker bet. It's now 1.05%, but the banker bet is still the best wager. So I'm going to rebet on the banker and hit rebet. So in this case, the player drew to his one, got a three for a total of four, the banker stood on his five and one. So let's deplete these cards from the deck. There's a three, an ace, a 10, a five, and another 10. And we can see the banker bet, the house advantage for the banker bet went down slightly again to 1.04% advantage to the house. The banker bet is still the best bet and I'm gonna hit rebet. Banker wins with a natural eight. I'm gonna deplete these cards. Two, 10, nine, nine. And the house edge is still about the same. The banker bet is still the best bet. I'm gonna hit rebet again. Banker wins with a natural eight. I'm gonna deplete the five. 10, eight, and 10. And banker bet is still the best bet, rebet. And as you can see, these expected values do not fluctuate all that much, especially at the beginning of the shoe. So you shouldn't expect to bet anything but the banker for the you know first couple of bets in a shoe. I'm gonna deplete these cards, ace, 10, 10, another 10, a three and a six, and banker is still the best bet. 1.05% house edge on the banker bet. Hit rebet. Banker wins with a total of three. We're gonna deplete the 10, the five, the seven, another 10, a three and another 10. So house advantage went up a little bit for the banker bet. I'm gonna, but it's still the best bet. I'm gonna rebet. So banker wins with a total of seven. Player drew to a four. Banker wins. I'm gonna deplete these cards: four, four, six, ten, and seven. House advantage went slightly down for the banker. I'm gonna hit rebet. Banker wins. Let's deplete these cards. 10, five, eight, ace, 10, 
and six. House advantage went up on the banker bet, but it's still the best bet. I'm gonna click rebet. So player wins with natural eight. Let's deplete the ace, seven, two, and four. House advantage is still 1.05 for banker. That's still the best bet, hit rebet. Baker wins standing on a seven. Let's deplete the 10, three, two, eight, and nine. Rebet, Baker's still the best bet. Player wins with a six. Let's deplete these cards. Two, four, five, eight, and seven. Baker's still the best bet, hit rebet. Banker wins, player drew to a zero. Let's deplete these cards. Seven, 10, three, two, 10, and another two. The house advantage is going down for the banker, but we're still nowhere near an advantage. And this is what you're often going to be running into is that these values will fluctuate a little bit, but it won't go so far as to give you an advantage. Let's uh, rebet. Banker is still the best bet. Let's deplete these cards nine, five, ten, and nine. Banker still the best bet. Rebet. Player wins. Let's deplete the six, ten. Ace and two tens. And banker's still the best bet. Rebet. Banker wins with a five total. Let's deplete these cards. Ace, three, ten, nine, and six. Still banker, best bet. Rebet. I'm going to play until we hit a shuffle point in this shoe. Three, ten, ten, four, nine, and ace. The banker bet house advantage is going down here. You know, hit rebet. Player wins. Let's do this. Ten, eight, five, two. Ace and eight. Still, banker is the best bet. Rebet. Player wins. Let's deplete these cards. Ten, six, eight, ten, ten, and three. Banker's still the best bet. Rebet. So 10, 10, 4, 6, 7, 5. Banker's still the best bet. Rebet. Okay, so now we hit a shuffle. We have won quite a bit actually, but it, how much we won is irrelevant because we really didn't have an advantage, but we did win about 150,000, so 15 hands around that but I will show you a little bit about the GTO tool in a second. So you may be wondering, is this actually working? Uh, if we wanted to see what the house edge would look for various bets if we took out certain cards. So let's take out all of the odd cards and see what happens. What would you expect to happen if you took out all the odd cards? So here's a situation where our probability of tying really goes kind of through the roof, right? Because when you have only even numbers, you really narrow down the field of possibilities for your totals, right? If, if you have all even numbers, 
you're gonna end up with a two, four, six, eight, or zero as your total. So we've gone from a field of 10 different numbers that our totals can become to five. And the tie bet pays eight to one. So we have a very good advantage in this situation. We have a 62% advantage over the house by betting on tie if we're in a situation where we deplete all of the odd cards. If we remove all of the non-tens, now you can see we can only tie. And we are for certain going to end up with a zero total for the banker and the player. And since the bet pays eight to one, our bet is going to win 800% of its value. And that's what we would expect to see. If we add a bunch of fives here, so in this situation, we're going to either end up with a five or a zero. So when you win, you're going to win with a five against the other player or banker who's going to have a total of zero. So in this scenario, the banker will have an advantage because when the player draws a zero, the banker will stand pat with a five total. This allows the banker to beat a player who started with the zero and tie when the player started with the five. But you're going to tie quite a bit. The tie is still a great bet. It's still the best bet. You can bet the tie, but also know that if you bet money on the banker, you're going to win 4% on average. But obviously the tie bet is the best bet to make in this situation. But you can see that our expected value of the tie bet went down because there's a possibility of the banker winning. There's a possibility of the player winning. So those are really extreme examples. These are examples that you're not going to run into, but it's just enough to prove to you that this is working, that these calculations are happening. Here's a situation where the deck only has eights, nines, and tens. So no matter what, the banker will end up with a total that is independent of the player's third card. The banker will either end up with a zero and draw a third card, or they will end up with a six, seven, eight, or nine, and they will stand pat. This means that the player and banker will both employ the same drawing and standing rules. And since each hand is equally likely, you can see that the percentages are identical. You're going to get the banker winning 39.5% of the time. You're going to have the player winning 39.5% of the time. Even though this EV is negative here, that is because of the 5% commission that you have to pay on the banker wins. But you can also see that you still have a huge advantage on the tie bet here. For every dollar that you bet, you're going to win an additional 89 cents. So I think this is a good illustration to use as well. Uh, this deck only has tens, eights, and nines. And each outcome is equally likely for both banker and player. Which means that neither bet should have an advantage. And that's what we see here. They are equally likely. And these numbers are identical. So can you use this to become a millionaire playing online Baccarat? Probably not. The opportunity for making bets when you have an advantage are very rare in Baccarat. It's not like blackjack where the house advantage and the player advantages often go back and forth. The needle for the house edge stays within a very narrow range for the most part. And casinos won't deal very far into the shoe, which really hinders your ability to dig for situations where there might be a really juicy opportunity. So if you had to sit down and play hundreds or thousands of hands just waiting for a 2% edge over the house, you'd have to multiply your bet by hundreds or thousands just to make up for the bets that lost. Many, many, many people have tried to come up with a card counting system for Baccarat, but the truth is that having an edge over the house comes up just too infrequently. And even with a tool like GTO Baccarat that can calculate the exact odds in real time, you're unlikely to gain an overall advantage over the house. But there may be an opportunity to just watch another player bet and play on an online site while you keep track of the cards and then jump in with a bet when you detect an advantage play situation. How do we get to it, bro? <gasps> and you know that, um... oh, please, please. Yeah! Oh, bang! The gold man! Of course, make sure you're not violating any rules of the site or else you might find yourself banned from withdrawing. And I am not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice, whatever that means. So I really hope you use and enjoy this tool. I believe this tool is accurate, but use it at your own risk. I make no claims as to the accuracy of this tool.
And even if the tool claims you have an advantage, it's possible that you will still lose. There's always risk involved when you're gambling. So let me know in the comments if you have any success with GTO Baccarat, and let me know if you have any suggestions. Like all my code on jackace.com, everything is public and open source and available on GitHub. If you enjoyed this tool, remember to like and subscribe. Always gamble responsibly, and peace out, donkeys. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never ran to the no, man, I still go. Go, go.